Namaste and hello everyone. Welcome back to another video on Hamsavahini Vajraastra and I'm Ahuna. Today let me take you on my journey from the outskirts of Lucknow which is in the north of India to Nainital, a Himalayan resort town in the Kumaon region of India's Uttarakhand state. As you all know from my previous videos, I have been traveling and I'm currently setting out for a mini vacation with my father and close family friends. Nainital was formerly a British hill station and today is surrounded by hills, mountain peaks, temples and of course the famous Nainital Lake. We set our course by road and since I had a good four to six hours ahead of me, I decided to pick up East Lynn by Mrs. Henry Wood and listen to its audio version. East Lynn was on my Victober TBR and if you didn't already know, the Victober Readathon is an ongoing event conducted on Booktube every year and this year it has been hosted by Katie from Books and Things, Kate from Kate Howe and Lucy from Lucy the Reader. I'll post the links to the announcement video in the description box below and also link them in the cards overhead for all of you to watch. But before I begin, I'd like to alert everyone of spoilers in this video. So if you plan to read East Lynn and if you haven't already read it, I'd request you to quit watching further for your own sake. But if you do enjoy listening to a story with a fantastic plot, Please grab a cup of tea or a coffee and join me further in this video. So now let's get down to the book itself. East Lynn is an 1861 sensational novel written by Mrs. Henry Wood and I was listening to the BBC Radio 4 adaptation by Michael Bakewell with Rosemary Leach as the narrator, David Collins as Mr. Carlyle, Moya Leslie as Lady Isabel Vane and Anthony Edridge as Francis Levison. The story begins in the countryside with a majestic estate called East Lynn up for sale on a private network of tentative buyers who could shed a good sum of money quietly for the purchase while adhering to all conditions both legal and personal as laid down by the current owner Lord Mount Vane. Lord Mount Wayne was an old well-off man in the eyes of the public but was suffering badly from ill health due to his disease called gout and was in dire need of a good sum of money to secure a humbler place to live with his only daughter Lady Isabel Vane. East Lynn was not far away from the little village of West Lynn as far as location went. One fine day a young 
bright lawyer by the name of Mr. Archibald Carlyle called in to visit Lord Mantrain to buy the estate for himself and upon settling with the final negotiations the estate was purchased and as per terms Lord Mantrain and his daughter were the immediate guests residing at the estate so that in the public view Lord Mantrain was still the owner of East Lynn but on legal papers it was actually Mr. Carlyle. Mr. Archibald Carlyle, the new proud owner of this beautiful estate, now met with Lady Isabel Vane and was smitten by her beauty at the first sight. Lady Isabel, unaware of the dealings of her father and utterly innocent of the ways of the world, engaged herself with her neighbours and cousins and spent a good deal of time with them as she had lost her mother at a very young age and the elders amongst the neighbourhood had a soft corner for her. Mr. Archibald Carlyle, on the other hand, was a lawyer and was a close friend of Mr. Justice Hare, who had a son called Richard and a daughter called Barbara, and both were quite close to Mr. Carlyle, especially Barbara Hare, who in the eyes of the world would someday be married to Mr. Carlyle because she was very fond of him. But on the sudden, unexpected demise of Lord Mount Vane, which rendered Lady Isabel Vane a complete penniless orphan who had to bear the torment of a jealous cousin's wife, Mr. Carlyle lost no opportunity in proposing that Lady Isabel Vane be his wife and return to East Lynn as its mistress. This was received as a great shock by the entire West Lynn village and Barbara Hare herself as she mistook Mr. Archibald's friendship and goodwill for his future marital interests in her and was consequently devastated at the news. Lady Isabel Vane surprised her cousin's wife too, for there was another who was peculiarly detached yet showed remarkable signs of romantic interests in her and this was Captain Francis Levison who was not of a good character and although Isabel was innocent and had almost fallen in love with him, yet Captain Francis Levison encouraged her to accept the marriage proposal put forth by Mr. Carlyle and Lady Isabel did so in haste. So with a confused heart, with expectations of romantic interests brewing for Captain Francis Levison in the heart, yet in the mind firmly resolved to marry Mr. Carlyle, Lady Isabel finally returns to East Lynn as Mrs. Isabel Carlyle. A hurricane passes over many, like Barbara Hare, at this turn of events, and it also heralds another hurricane in the life of the Hare family. In the quiet village of West Lynn, the sudden murder of Mr. George Hallichon, father to two daughters, Affie and Joyce Hallichon, causes a stir and suspicions and rumours which arise all point towards Richard Hare, Barbara's brother, who was pursuing a romantic interest in Affie Hallichon. But he was not the only one, though, and there was a mysterious Captain Thorne with a strange habit of hair flicking and a sparkling diamond ring on his finger, who was also present on the murder scene, and it seems that he was forgotten from everyone's memory. And although Richard Hare was innocent, yet he was a fugitive now, penniless, scared and hunted by the police for murder. After being threatened by his own father and thrown out of his family, Richard meets Barbara secretly and keeps disguising himself to try and go unnoticed while trying to earn his bread for survival and hunting evidence to plead his innocence. Barbara thus turns to her close friend Mr. Carlyle and both agree to keep Richard's appearances undercover and help him in every possible way.
Years pass and Mr. and Mrs. Carlyle become parents to three children. Yet Isabel's health starts faltering and so she is advised by their family doctor to move to a sunnier place for recovery. Archibald's elder sister, Cornelia, who had already started living in East Lynn to manage the home front since the time of marriage, encouraged the change and so Isabel left her children in the care of Miss Cornelia Carlyle and her handmaid, Joyce Hallijohn, one of the daughters of the murdered victim. While in recovery, Isabel crosses path with Mr. Francis Levison again, who is in great debt and has thus run away from Westlin to escape his pursuers. And although Isabel remains in the perfect, peaceful sanctuary of being a good wife as Mrs. Carlyle in approach, heart and soul towards Mr. Levison, yet it is Mr. Levison now who sways her heart with confessions of his ardent, beating heart for her and disconfuses Isabel even more. Isabel suddenly longs to return with her husband, Archibald to East Lynn and although Mr. Carlyle does make a visit for he's away uh, for business yet he being unaware of the romantic persuasions of Mr. Levison for his wife encourages both to be together as Isabel's health does show visible signs of healing. Thus Isabel tries to set a boundary and waits to return to East Lynn to uh, her husband and children. Meanwhile, Mr. Archibald Carlyle, out of goodwill, agrees to help Mr. Francis Levison to clear his debt and return to West Lynn, and in the meanwhile be a guest at East Lynn. However, he is absolutely unaware of the romantic persuasions of Mr. Francis Levison for his wife behind his back. Out of goodwill, Mr. Archibald Carlyle also tries to help the Hare family and therefore holds secret meetings with Barbara Hare and her mother in connection with Richard Hare's case. This is misinterpreted by Mr. Levison when he arrives as a guest at East Lynn and a while later he misleads Isabel to thinking of her husband's infidelity in their marriage and as an evidence also leads Isabel to see for herself one of these secret meetings of Barbara Hare and Archibald Carlyle with her own eyes as they pass the Hare family's gardens one evening. In a fit of rage and a broken heart, Isabel finally agrees and relents to Mr. Levison and elopes with him, leaving Joyce Hallijohn, her handmaid, to forever be with her children and leaves a note for her husband, accusing him of her unhappiness and his infidelity in marriage. Mr. Archibald Carlyle, on discovering this, is in a perfect state of confusion and shock and on the advice of his spinster sister, Cornelia, Carlyle refuses to pursue his eloped wife and finally settles grievously for a divorce. The divorce between Archibald and Isabel is complete within a year and Isabel, now living with Francis Levison in Europe, bears his unborn child awaiting Levison to marry her as soon as the divorce is complete. But there is an unexpected turn of events and Francis Levison's rich uncle dies suddenly, leaving Levison the sole inheritor of his vast property. Upon learning this, Levison's attitude and sentiments towards Isabel changes for the worst. And he keeps Isabel in the dark about the completion of her divorce and hurries to England without marrying her. Upon his departure, Isabel discovers the letter stating the completion of the divorce procedures and that Francis had lied to her about it and waits furiously for Levison to return. Levison on returning and securing his lost position amongst the aristocrats is persuaded by Isabel for marriage, which Levison firmly declines 
owing to the change in his situation in life and disowns the child Isabel bore for him. An enraged, cheated and heartbroken Isabel with an illegitimate child now finds herself alone in Europe with no income and who should come to rescue her but her distant cousin Lord Mount Vane whose jealous wife had triggered her miserable situation in life to start with after the immediate death of her father years earlier. Upon learning the shocking news of her elopement with Levison and their illegitimate child, her cousin takes charge of the situation to save the embarrassment which it would bring to his family's name upon discovery and hence agrees to help Isabel and this child to settle in a different country and remain hidden till something better could be made with the terrible, catastrophic situation. Isabel sets out with her newborn child and a peasant girl as her child's nurse and takes the train to Germany. But unfortunately, the train meets with a fatal accident and Isabel loses her newborn child and receives fatal injuries and is almost on her deathbed. Isabel is declared dead and news of this fatal train accident with its death tolls and casualties are published in all newspapers and Mr. Carlyle, when receives this news, is shocked, devastated and in grief. However, he resolves firmly to be a good father to his three children. As the years pass by, Mr. Carlyle finally sets his heart on Miss Barbara Hare and they have a grand marriage at Westlin. Meanwhile, Miss Cornelia, Mr. Carlyle's spinster sister, who was managing the household of Eastlin for all these years, is asked to return to Westlin so that now Mrs. Carlyle can take it up from there and Joyce Hallijohn, the late Isabel's maid, refuses to leave Eastlin to take care of a late lady's three children as she had promised to her. Within a year, Barbara bears a healthy son and Mr. Carlyle is once again the respected lawyer whom everyone looks up to and is soon nominated to become an MP in the town elections by its people. Overjoyed, he and Barbara decide to move to London and occasionally be at Eastland, but they find a need for a governess who could be with their children in their absence. Upon making further inquiries, Mr. and Mrs. Carlyle settle for a well-reputed governess by the name of Miss Vine, who always seemed to dress up with a prominent bonnet and blue glasses which almost hid her face and used to walk with a slight limp. Miss Vine gladly accepts her duty as a governess and is overly fond of the three children, especially the eldest son, William. William soon falls ill with tuberculosis and Miss Vine tries her very best to save him as she seemed to have lost three children in her life, one of them also being called William. Meanwhile, Mr. Carlyle is challenged in the elections by another candidate, Mr. Francis Levison, whom the whole of West Lynn now hates because of the devastation he brought to Mr. Carlyle's first family. Mr. Carlyle is elected MP by the people of West Lynn, and soon the late George Hallijohn murder case is reopened. A proper trial is conducted and the real murderer revealed in court and a lifelong sentence passed to the convicted murderer. And Mr. Richard Hare, Barbara's brother, is proved innocent and returns home in West Lynn as the master of his house. Meanwhile, Miss Cornelia Carlyle, who came to visit the children and East Lynn, is struck by the uncanny resemblance of Miss Vine with late Isabel when she accidentally takes off her blue glasses in her presence. Joyce Hallijohn too has her suspicions but keeps quiet about it. Mr. Carlyle's firstborn, William, declines steadily in health and finally dies and the Carlyle family is shocked to find Miss Vine grieving more as though she had lost her own son. After the death of William, Miss Vine's health declined steadily out of depression and she refuses to accept any medical aid from the Carlyle family. However, one evening when she was extremely sick, Joyce discovers her without her bonnet and glasses and cries out in astonishment. For Miss Vine is none other than her former lady, Lady Isabel Vane. And though now her once beautiful face was disfigured, 
and she had received severe injuries from the fatal train accident, Isabel makes Joyce promise not to reveal her identity to the family, for she had started earning her living as a governess in Germany, but when her pupil was married off early, she had to secure another job immediately, and this had brought her to the Carlyle's offer for a governess, and being a mother of three children, she could no longer keep away from her three children and hence had to take up the job. However, after a few days when Isabel, now Miss Vine, is surely on her deathbed, finally reveals her true identity of being Lady Isabel Vane to the Carlyle family and Mr. Archibald, her former husband, is shocked to the core along with his wife Barbara, but Isabel only asks for his forgiveness and accepts death in peace. Barbara and Archibald console each other after the shock and Barbara finally is at peace to learn that Archibald finally finds his true sincere love in Barbara and Barbara alone. So that is the plot of this fantastic story and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Do let me know your thoughts. And with this we arrive to the end of this video. If you enjoyed the story, do please leave a comment in the comment section below and also leave a like for this video and I'll be back next week with another video. So till then, take care, have a good reading week ahead and namaste.